Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mods Cage Radio Special Report. We're going to take this one out to my man who's been on the show several times. Take it out to Preston Postal P. Sharp. Preston, my man, how are you? Good. How are you, Mods? I am uh, apparently doing a lot better than you. Now, I've reported on this show many times that uh, Pure Combat, I think they're bad for the sport. I think Al Jocelyn is bad for the sport. I've been heavily criticized. Some people have, uh, you know, taken me to task for saying this shit, and it proved that uh, I was right. This guy uh, wasn't paying fighters, et cetera, and so forth. We had a full report. Um, but what I didn't know is um, after your last fight, which was with John Reedy, uh, take, a, take us through exactly what happened in this whole insurance thing and how this thing works because, like, I didn't even know that they needed insurance. Take me through it, my man. What exactly happened? Well, first let me start by saying uh, I usually don't run into situations where I'm telling somebody, you told me so, it's usually the other way around. Right. I've been around the block, but I got to tell you, Mott, uh you told me so, and I gave him the benefit of the doubt, and it bit me in my ass. But anyway, yeah, so uh, I uh, fought John Reedy. He knocked me the fuck out, and uh, I uh, wasn't allowed to leave the cage on my own. Uh, I guess I was pretty out of it, and... Uh, so they forced me on a stretcher, made me go to uh, Fresno Hospital, and then uh, I left, and I called my trainer, and he said, he said, well, what, did the state ask you to do anything? And I said, yeah, they want me to do a CAT scan. So I went back the next day and did a CAT scan. So then I get home, and uh, I think, I don't know, a week or two went by, and I started getting bills in the mail, and I'm going, hmm, this is weird. I submitted the insurance information to him already and then uh so i called the insurance in i'm like didn't i give you the insurance didn't i give you guys the insurance already and they're like um well let us just get it again and then so i give them the insurance and then i get more bills in the mail and uh i go i call them back again and i i say yeah i i gave you guys the insurance uh like what's you know i thought it was the hospital i'm like you know can't can't you guys get it in the computer? And then uh, they say, well, it's in the computer, but uh, apparently we called the insurance company and the promoter didn't pay the premium on the insurance, so they're not going to cover your bills. And I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me, you know. Al, Al forgot to mention that part to me when we had been talking because I had been patient. I didn't call the commission on him. I was one of the, the few that, was like, all right, it's cool, you know, he said, he said, please don't cash your check for a week, I'm like, okay, it's cool, you know, no, no big deal, uh, shit happens, I can wait a week, and then two weeks, three weeks, and so on, but we'll get into that part later, but he didn't mention nothing about the insurance, so I call him, like, hey, they didn't pay the insurance, and he's going on and on, oh, well, so and so didn't sell tickets, and getting off the subject, it was all about why, how it was everybody else's fault that nobody, that, that nobody got paid, and this guy promised he was going to sell these tickets, and that guy promised he was going to do this, and that. And I'm just sitting there going, you know, you know, I'm two and a half, three hours away from the show. We agreed that I wasn't selling any tickets. This has nothing to fucking do with me. Like, why are you telling me this? Like, I'm just letting you know you didn't pay the premium. They're not covering my bills, and he's like. Then he starts going on and on. Well, well, those motherfuckers down at the at the uh, the uh, insurance, they know I'm going to pay them. They should cover that. Like they know I'm going to get them the money. I'm going. Wow. Like what? You know what I mean? I, I just like yeah, I was speechless. I'm like, you didn't pay the insurance company, and you're basically saying that they should do the honor system with you and just wow. figure that you're a good guy and you're gonna pay him someday and they need to cover six thousand or whatever it was worth of doctor's bills because you're gonna pay the premium someday like you know what what, what do you say to it so and this uh, is a california state athletic commission sanctioned show so i mean this is something that that is standard that happens at all the california stat, uh sanctioned shows correct yeah it was a, yeah that's part of their contract with the state and Right. So they're breaching. Not only did they breach the contract with 
the bond and uh, but now the insurance and who knows who knows what else but uh so I mean like the pay and stuff I'm like okay you know I'm not gonna get paid for a few shit happens even though I drove all the way out to the children's hospital which is quite quite a hike for me the day before right. Right. I was cutting weight I went and seen the kids uh, I went and got you know he wanted me to make sure I got stuff from Chuck Liddell right and uh, uh, I'll make sure you get the stuff from Chuck and the pole you know and the, uh, Chuck 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 and uh, okay I'll get the stuff from Chuck I, I drive drive to drive you know I, I all week I'm sitting there trying to get these pictures of Chuck together and and I did it and I got some of Antonio and I took him to the to the kids and uh and he's like you know if you all in in his contract it's like oh and if you don't show up to the hospital uh you're gonna get fined 10 percent right. and and if you don't make it over here then you're gonna get docked another five percent and if you're not on time uh right. for, for the thing here you're gonna get but but he can just like not pay no one not pay the insurance let someone get hauled off on a stretcher and sit there and leave them hanging. So that's the way you roll out, well, you know? That, that's what I'm at this point. But at, at this point, I'm still giving them the benefit of the doubt until I'm, these bills are rolling in. I'm like, right. ow. I'm like, I got to call the state. He's like, you know, like, uh, don't do that. Don't do that. And I'm like, no, I have to. I'm like, you, you haven't paid me. I think I gave him two weeks to pay that premium, and he never paid it. Probably because he was too worried about getting his head bashed in with a baseball bat from some other guy that was starting him. Right. And then then he's paid. like, "Oh, I'm going to pay him off and fuck this guy off." And he's like, probably trying to prioritize for him and his wife's safety who he should pay first. It's the only thing I could guess. And the people that are being nice, like me. He's like, oh, fuck him. He's a nice guy. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. oh, fuck him. He, fuck that guy. He, he's a nice guy. I'm just gonna, gonna fuck him because he's not gonna, he's not gonna do shit. Right. You know what I mean? So, so I called the state and then, and then he leaves the tell Well, I really wish you would have let me know before you went and called. Like, dude, I've been calling you every day. I'm getting these text messages. He has this, like, I was overwhelmed with phone calls. I got this long text from Shelly. I was overwhelmed with with uh, phone calls in Texas. He's going to take a full week off. Poor little Al, you know. Oh, and he's got ir- ir- irritable bowel syndrome and and this condition. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck she was talking about. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my god! I, I'm like, okay, well, if burning, if burning, uh, well, how many fights was there? Nine. If burning eighteen fighters gives you ir- irritable bowel syndrome, okay. But uh, so. Uh, this was a few weeks before the whole insurance thing was getting down to the series. They're sending me the ten dollar or ten day notices, like you know, pay this in ten days or it goes through our collection. This and that. And I got a few of those, a few of those, and I kept calling. And then, uh, so uh, today, today we had some emails back and forth, and and Shelly was actually uh, like cussing at me because I call him. You know, I, I, I'll be honest, I got mad. I got mad. I was I was pissed. I I came home on. Uh, I've been to Mexico all week training with uh, Team Quest for my fight, and I uh, came home uh, Thursday. My girlfriend had to go to her family's, uh, and we were in open presents Thursday because she was leaving. So I get home and uh, we're opening presents. You know, I'm giving we're having a nice gift exchange with the whole family thing, and everything's going great. My son, you know, we got our tree and all this, and, and I'm like, did did the heart, did the, did, did you get any packages, you know, with uh, anything in the mail? Did you? No, I didn't check the mail. I'm like, oh, your your heart, you know, I got her a heart monitor. She's uh, she's training for fitness, so I got her heart and calorie counter. Oh, let me go check the mail. Uh, your package should be in there. Well, well, not only was her package not in there, but letters from Fresno Hospital. And I open it, and it's like, oh, we're taking you to collection. Oh, there there went the whole gift exchange. Yeah, yeah, I was raging. Right. Shelly, yeah. Yeah, Shelly, I, I was raging. And it did ruin our, our, our Christmas gift exchange, and my son was bummed. So, yeah, call me a rager. 
I, I don't know if anyone thinks I have a valid reason for raging, but, uh, you know, whatever. It was it was all emotion, so she was one of the things. She called me a, a rager, like, you're a rager, like, like, as if I didn't have no reason to be upset. Okay, so uh, anyway, yeah, that, that part was like, ah, oh, God, boy, something, you know what I mean? But so I opened that, I, I take a picture of it, send it to Al, like, Merry Motherfucking Christmas, you know, send him a picture of my collection bill. And then uh, he sends me a, 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 a text back. He's like, I can't read this, and I don't know what it is. And I'm like, it's collections, da 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 And then he was trying to be like, I'm sorry, you know, I ruined the friendship, but this and that. You know, that, that was one of the things is why I never answered his call. Every time you talk to a guy, it's it's this motherfucker over here and that motherfucker and this this guy. Tech, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, saying... I'm not putting words in his mouth. This is literally how he talks. That fucker over there, uh, uh, so-and-so didn't sell the tickets, and that fucking guy over here is not selling tickets, and blah, 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 right? You know what I mean? You've heard him talk. Absolutely. It's it's something like this. That fucker over there not selling any tickets. Shelly! Shelly! Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And uh, I'm going, I'm going, (sighs) you know, I don't want to sit there. I'm fucking sitting here burnt. And I got I to gotta fucking also let this guy vent to me about how he's pissed that his, he didn't make money on his show. Like, right. I'm sitting here, you know, fucking a few fucking brain cells short and, and a hole in my cheek and took in the collections and my, my uh, fiance sitting here like, oh, we're never, we're never going to get a house now. Great, great. We're never, you know what I mean? Right. Our credit, your credit's gonna be bad. How are we ever gonna, how are we ever gonna fulfill our dream and buy a home? You know, and I'm, I'm got that pressure. So, uh, yeah, he's like, oh, send, he, that was one of the things he said, send me the bills. Send yeah. me the bills, and, and I will put them in my name and pay for them, and you won't have to worry about it. Right. You don't have to go to the state. You don't have to go to the state or nothing. I'll just pay them off. Like, don't worry, just trust right. me. Exactly. That like, worked out the first time. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I can't trust you. Like, you're not trustworthy. And so, uh, <clears throat> then, uh, uh, today, let me see. Let me, oh, man, did I, let me see. Did I go back? Let me see. Hold on one sec here. <laughs> Hurry up. My email's loading up. It, okay, anyway, uh, so, uh, yeah, that's just, you know, it's just been, it's been a battle. I, I was just, you know, I'm telling him when I left the hospital, that should all been behind me, don't you think? Oh yeah, absolutely. Should, should I still be having to having to deal with all this? No, stuff? because this uh, is uh, this is why you fight on California State Athletic Commission sanctioned shows. This is why you go spend the extra money, et cetera, and so forth. And the state brings out people to quote protect the fighters from all this. But I mean, where is the state in all this? Like, what do we have to do to uh, get the state to cash that bond? Yeah, yeah, I mean, after I, I got my money pretty, about a week and a half or so, after uh, I, I called the state, but I should have called the state right away. It, any fighters out there, if the promoter, you, you guys, like, think the promoter's cool and, and he's not paying you and he's saying, please don't take me to the state, don't buy that shit, man, take him straight to the state. The, the longer you wait, the worse it's going to be, especially with medical bills, and they start getting in the works, and it can be too late, and, and then you can be in my spot and and be having to deal with collections and stuff because of people that can't uh, fulfill their part of the deals, you know. We do our jobs as fighters. We go in there, we answer the bell, and we go out, win or lose, conscious or unconscious, we go out there and, and do it, you know. Sure, the crowd got got a, got exactly what they wanted to see. Some someone get KO'd for uh, whatever minute or whatever I was out for, and so I did my part. Like all I asked was that he fulfilled his part of the contract and and had medical insurance for me and paid me my show money. Okay, so here's one of Shelley's emails today. If you read the fucking emails, oh, I said 
I my I sent to her. She sent me these concoction of emails, all these forwards. Because I all I wanted was <clears throat> please send me, please send me the insurance, uh, the insurance policy number and the name of the insurance company, so I can call the hospital and submit this information. They say the state says that the he paid the premium, and so did they. So I just wanted to do it myself because I don't, you know, basically trust them as far as I could throw them, and so said this is a four to five four or five emails which I do not need what do I need what I do need is the insurance information this does not help me I thought that wasn't too too rude or or non non polite she emails me back this is Shelly Al Jocelyn's wife if you read the fucking emails then they would tell you that this insurance company just last week received the bill so how the hell could they be paid Answer your phone. The insurance company is calling you to tell you this. I'm like, oh, oh, is that is that how we're doing it? You know what I mean? Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I, like, like it's my fault. That what they a can't, piece of shit you are for fucking trying to get your fucking bills paid and, and money, Preston. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. What the fuck is that all about? <clears throat> well, I remember her yelling at John Reedy Cage side one night. Like, I can't even believe that she was getting loose like that, you know? Yeah. But uh, yeah. that's why I stopped uh, supporting that, uh, that shit show. And uh, I tried to let everybody know, like, these kind of practices. Because I know Doug Hunt's check bounced when uh, they did a show one time. And there's been several fighters on the last show. Obviously, you can document that yourself, that we're not paid. Um, you know, he went and retrieved Anthony, uh, or, uh, Jamie Hara's belt because Jamie Hara didn't want to pay sponsorship money, et cetera, and so forth at that Camp Pendleton fight. So he went and revoked his belt. And not only did he take his belt, he went and got it on a night that Jamie Hara was being inducted into, uh, the MMA KO Hall of Fame, which was even more low class. So, yeah, uh, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, and I'm getting emails uh, all the time right now about more shady shit that's going on. You know, it's, something's got to stop. So I appreciate you taking time with me today, my man, yeah, and letting me I wrote know. Back, uh, I wrote back awesome, but I don't need your excuses on why you guys can't pay your bills. So I think I'll pass on answering my phone. If you would have had your shit together, none of this would be going on. I was very patient with you, Flakes. If you want to play hardball, we'll play hardball. Get the bill paid. Now let's let's in contact. P.S. I have gotten no calls from nobody. I because I got no one calls from nobody. I said I was getting paperwork, and wow. I said this is that's the sign of a typical loser cursing at me because you are too big of a loser to pay your bills. So much for pure combat being an elite show. Oh yeah, they're... I will afford this. Go ahead. Yeah, I will afford this to Chuck. Chuck Liddell right now and let him know just what kind of people you are because you know uh you know how uh they're all over Chuck did like, oh Chuck's gotta be in the show Chuck's Chuck, gotta be there do you think Chuck could yeah. make it Chuck's gonna make a guest appearance I don't want to say anything but Chuck's coming yeah. oh yeah I don't know if I said in the second one I forgot cause I don't know if, I don't know if you were illiterate or just dumb I asked for the the policy number and name, not a bunch of emails from people complaining about your unprofessional organization. I would rather trust, I would never trust flakes like you to pay my bills. That's why, that's why it's at collections now. You will regret cursing at me over your thievery. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite is when she ends all of her emails with some biblical verse. Oh, yeah. Like, what is that all about? Like, you're so Christian, you just don't pay anybody, and then you use that kind of filthy language? That's not very Christian of you. Now she starts backpedaling on her bike. The insurance company has tried to call you, but you won't answer. But yet you want to continue to threaten and harass us, threaten and insult us? I don't, I don't, I don't these, I'm reading my full emails, not hers. Like, I don't. There's no... Did you hear any threats in there? Right. I thought I was pretty professional. I didn't even cuss in my emails like right. she did. Right. That's unprofessional. Exactly. Especially for, uh, especially for a high and mighty Christian like Shelly Matlock. Uh, right. So I said, my rage? I have no rage. Just want my bills covered as agreed in my contract that you did not fulfill. Which I'm sure everyone would be surprised of how long I've kept my cool. No big deal. Just another person that you guys screwed over. I guess that's how you guys look at 
Look at it. Karma's a bitch. Good luck on your next show. Try Kentucky. I think you blew it in California. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. I have some uh, some information, but I'm working on some other stuff. Um, but um, what is the what is the deal with the state? Did they tell you anything today? Like, um, ro- uh, what's his name? Is that George? Robert? I thought uh, you Brad- said. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I was dealing with Brandon, but okay, but George. I talked to George, but Brandon was out of the office, and you know, he he helped me. They they helped me. Uh, he he. He got right. I faxed the bills, and he got right on it. And uh, it's just like faxing back and forth and calling right. and this. Like it shouldn't be. When I when I left the hospital, gave the information. That should have been right. it. Right. Yeah. Done. That's a wrap. Exactly. Yeah. Now I, you know what I mean. I'm like reliving this, reliving this knockout every every time I get a bill. It's like I'm still dealing with it. I don't. I don't give a shit. And he. Yeah. That was another thing. He he threw a guilt trip on me. Like he said. uh Oh, I shouldn't have gave you the fight. Like, like, oh, oh, he's trying to give me a guilt trip. Like, right. now it's his fault that I got hurt. And right. That, uh, that he just shouldn't have gave me the fight, you know. Like, I, I knew what he was doing, you know. He's trying to trying to uh, get a fight for John because he thought he was going to sell a bunch of tickets. Well, John didn't sell hardly any tickets. And uh, so now he's like, you know, oh, I shouldn't have got you the fight. He's not saying he shouldn't have got me the fight because I got knocked out. He's saying he shouldn't have got me the fight because he didn't sell any tickets. He, he ain't fooling me. Right. And then uh, I said, you know what? Don't don't guilt trip me. I said, I said uh, we signed we as fighters signed the dotted line. We know we know the the risks we take as you know we're signing our life away. You know it, it has only happened twice, but there is a chance you can you could you could get killed in there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. There's a chance. I mean, it's not very highly, highly, but you know, you got a high, high chance of getting knocked out or, or something. You know, leg lock, breaking your leg, whatever. We know what we're doing, but but we also think, hey, we're going to be covered, like right. medically. That's why we, right. like you said in the beginning, we pay, we pay the state, and uh, that you know for license fees, so we're covered and all that. But right. I, I just, I guess they're. You know, California hasn't been doing it long enough or something. I don't know, because I've been burned multiple times in, in shows and uh, on pay. And then uh, I've never dealt with insurance because I've never had to go to the hospital right. or nothing. But but uh, I guess they ain't got a handle on that yet either. But, it, you know, maybe maybe uh, maybe we could get the, the license licensing fees lowered until they can figure out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, maybe they should charge five dollars a year for licensing until they get this whole thing. Uh, until they figure it out. Yeah, yeah, something like that. You know what I mean? I don't know. Is that fair? I'm or not really. Fair enough. Well, I mean, better than I mean, what's I've happening had... to you. I mean, it's just it's totally uh, it's a fucking outrage. Just basically what it all comes down to. But, yeah, I mean, this is the fourth time, two times in. Uh, what was that show called? Uh, that one remember in Paso with the uh, Ray? Oh, gosh, I don't. Was at the dome at the dome in Bakersfield. It was called Battleground. Oh God, that was like the worst poster I ever saw in my entire life. Wasn't Warpath supposed to be on that? Yeah, yeah, Warpath fought at the yeah. dome. Yeah, he fought Mike Cook. It was a beat down fight. Yeah, and and two times he he bounced my check, and then one time with David Brock at. Where Nam, I fought on a car with Nam Fam when he fought Shad Smith. They he didn't pay me for three years. It was three thousand. Wow. Then, now Al, uh, he took two plus months to pay me. So I don't know, like the whole bonds and all that stuff. Just it's just not. It's not. Uh, it's not working. Right. Basically, you know, it's not. It's not like, oh, don't worry, we got a bond if they don't come up with the money. That's not the case. I don't know how it works, really. I've never really been on the inside or a promoter of the show to know, but, um, yeah, it's just not happening. You know? So, uh, be careful out there, fighters. Uh, yeah, make sure you're not dealing with uh, people who can't fulfill the their side of the... You know, we're out there paying whatever. Like, I know the first time is... Uh, eight fifty or so to get all your medicals and other right. places it could be up to two grand for your MRIs and all. We're paying that to fight, and they're like, 
yeah, get this done, get your neuro done, get your blood work. You know, they're on you like stink on shit, but when it come, comes time to, to pay you, it's like, you know, no big deal. Like, ah, oh, fuck you. Right. You're out there getting punched. You're out there not only driving all over doing medicals to fight for them, you're getting punched in the face. This and that. They want you to sell tickets. It's like, I don't know. Uh, I guess what would it be? Snakes in the grass or something? Something like that. Mm, mm, so just be careful. There's some good promoters out there. I like. I really like uh, uh, the De La O's. I mean, they they seem to have a good show. I'm fighting uh, this Sunday. Okay. At Long Beach Fight Night. Yeah. Fight okay. Night. Long Beach Fight Night. Now I've fighting never been there. to that one. I get the. Uh, I like their little logo with the black eyed uh, smiley face dude. And uh, yeah. I've never been to that one. I know it's a ringed environment. This is not a cage. Um, does that yeah, it's matter? Like a pride ring and big ring. Yeah. Does that matter big to you at all? Pride. I kind of like this ring because it's big, and I, I I get to get my footwork going. You know, I okay. I'll, I'm uh, for being being an older fighter. I can my footwork when I get it going is pretty is pretty good. You know, I can move around really. I I, I uh I you know I'm I'm ambidextrous so. Uh, I, I cause, you know, I mean, it's just I like I like space. I like like to move around. So the five ring rope. I don't know as far as the takedowns. I think it might be easier to take people down off the cage, you know. But because when I had uh, Roman Machich and he he literally grabbed the ropes and pulled himself right out of the ring. Like I mean, he was right. pretty far away. He got the rope and like like uh, like you know how Sean Shirk when he was on the the. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the UFC uh, countdown, how he's pulling himself on the rope down the thing for cardio. That's what it was like. You know, he pulled himself that much out of the ring. But, yeah, other than that, you know, it's a five-ring rope, so they can't really squeeze through. And you can still, like, there's different tricks, you know, with the cage. The cage is just like a, a surface that don't give it all. Right. You mash them into it, and you use your pressure and then rip their legs out or pull them out in the center of the pipe with the ring you use little tricks where you can run them into the ropes and you know you're, you're going to bounce off it a little so as you do you rip the legs out i got you okay so, yeah we sparred in a ring for for years and years at slow kickboxing that's what we had was a ring for a long time and then uh a throw down or somebody came and set up a cage for chuck so then i got used to the cage but that that seven years in the in the ring, you can never take that away when you've been sparring somewhere seven years, right. you know what I mean? Right. I'll always, I'll always remember that. I'll always remember having my back on it and how to stop takedowns on it, even though I haven't been training in a ring. Actually, I did train in the five, five, uh, five rope ring at Team Quest because Dan has that ring in his gym still from when he fought in Pride. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same ring. But, how, uh, how many, yeah. How many times did you fight this year? Four times? Yeah, I think it was four, four or five. I got a yeah, yeah, about four. Four times, okay. I got, a, I got a, I'm all, let me look on Sure Dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, we'll look it up. Well, you had Fight for Wrestling, Pure Combat, I think like Fight Syndicate or something. Yeah, uh, that one was Roman Machichin. So that's uh, Fight for Wrestling. Yeah, Roman Machichin. That was uh, M M M E Z okay. Sports, Craig Zimmerman, and then. Uh, yeah, John Reedy and Okay. So what are we looking to do uh next year? How many fights? Just uh money would be good. Fourteen. You need thirteen <laughs> or fourteen. Hopefully you'll get paid on at least like four or five of those, so that'll be Yeah. That'll be good. Yeah, I don't Spread know. Those uh, out. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think this year I wanna pick my fights more carefully and then and, and, uh kinda, you know, fix my record a little bit and uh uh, play it a little smarter and not not grasp. Like I think the whole amateur, like the amateur thing, really hurt the pros this year in 2010. I think that's kind of starting to, you know, they're still doing throwing a lot of amateur, but I think people are like they're on to it now. They know what a rash guard and and uh, bigger gloves equals it equals it could equal a schoolyard brawl. You know what I mean? Right. No, I've seen plenty of them. Yeah, it could equal a kid with junior high wrestling that has been uh, bought some U.S. 
got some UFC gloves for his birthday, and, and oh, they yeah. share them in the backyard with their <laughs> friends and got put on an amateur card. That's what it could equal. Whereas, you know, you got guys that have been doing it seven, eight, nine plus years are going to bring more excitement to the table and more technique, and, and it's just going to be... Don't get me wrong, there's some good amateurs out there, you know what I mean? But, I mean, uh, but like Chad Mendez, he... He didn't. He didn't do amateur. He went straight to the pros. You know, what I mean, he came right. right out of Cal Poly, went straight to the Palace. I mean, you get guys Olympic wrestlers. You don't see him doing amateur fight Olympic judo guys. I see it on Sure Dog all the time. Just signed an uh, Olympic judo guy. Right. I get up right now. They just signed some guys from the Olympics and wrestling and judo and stuff. But they don't do amateur, you know, because their their judo and their their wrestling is such high level that. You know, I mean, I don't even know how the commission works, if they allow it or not, but if you're in a, like Chad Mendez being the, the you know, NCAA uh, runner-up. So, yeah, he's been looking good. But uh, anyway, yeah, so I'm just gearing towards that. It's not, this this whole thing, I ain't, I ain't letting it get get in, uh, in the way of this fight Sunday. I just, you know, this week after after tomorrow when I head down to LA, I'm just gonna put this whole thing in the back of my head and deal with it when I get back. You know. All right, my man. Well, uh, hopefully we can put some uh, put some pressure on Al Jocelyn and Pure Combat to get you your money uh, to get these fucking bills paid, et cetera, and so forth. If you need some help with the state, holla at your boy. I'll be uh, more than willing to fire off a few phone calls. I want to see, uh, you know, what I can do to help you. Cause I don't think it's right. Uh, I mean this whole fight, uh, mainly it took place because I couldn't really verbally blow him up because he hid behind the hospital. And that's the other thing, you know, this is for the kids. It's for the kids. Well, fuck if nobody got paid, how much money to the hospital making this whole deal? Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and and it's like you know, in in the sales game, when you fuck somebody over like that, well, it fucks up all the other salesmen in the game. So how many more people, you know, is Valley Children's Hospital gonna or uh, Clovis Community Hospital gonna step up and want to get involved with another fight? No, boy, you know what I, hope I mean. They won't want to put their name on that. What would you know? You know what I mean, what is that? What is that? What is that? You know, what is that? Dude, what if what if some of the kids hear about this that were right. at the hospital and right. they're like they met us and now now it just ruined their day that was supposed to it was supposed to make make their day meeting pro fighters right and then what if what if one of the kids liked me and he found out this happened to me and he's like oh I really like that guy and it less just leaves a MMA leaves a foul taste in his mouth right we don't want that you know what I mean exactly but, exactly so yeah so. uh you know, not to mention, I, he he uh, accidentally forwarded me a text of a new theater. Unbelievable. They, yeah, he got a new theater. Be, yeah. That thing had to be a $40,000 40, brand new sofas and remote control, uh, my, uh, drop screen, and I mean, this this room was cherry. Damn, dude, man, we should cherry. go there like fucking Wheel of Fortune and shit. Like, remember how they used to fucking go shopping back in the day on that show? I'll take the fucking couch for seven hundred, and I'll take, and we'll just start fucking taking shit out of there, bro. Maybe that's how we roll. Yeah, we'll take the fucking yeah, Ice Man over there, have him start yeah. signing shit, you know, and we'll fucking, we'll take it. It'll be good. Yeah, I totally. <laughs> I I uh. Chuck, this is one thing, Chuck, I mean, Chuck, because Chuck came from, you know, he came from the ground up, like every, right, every MMA guy did in his era. I think most all guy, all guys still to this day are coming from ground zero to build themselves up if they are making right. money. You know, Chuck's been successful. He, he's made a, he's made enough, I think, to, to live a happy life. But, uh, you know, he just doesn't appreciate it because he's been where we're at. You know, right. he could have been, could have been, could could have been him just as easy as, as uh, me, you know, and he knows, like, sure. you know, he puts himself in that spot when I tell him stuff like this, and right. he's definitely, definitely going to have a different outlook on pure combat. Oh, yeah, that is not going to wash well, and trust me, uh, Cage Radio will continue to bang the uh, 
the fucking hater train, so don't even fucking worry about that shit. I'll have this motherfucker on the tracks, in the street, by the air. Fucking, I don't even give a shit. I told motherfuckers from jump that this motherfucker was like this, and uh, everybody wanted to call me a hater. You got former UFC fighters, you know, hey, I'm fucking bad for the sport when I start talking down about a guy's fucking show. Really? Really? Because I'm the fucking guy that's not paying fighters and putting them and their families in financial fucking hardship? Get the fuck out of here, dot com. Bunch of fucking bullshit. So... Um, All I can say is you told me so. Yeah, well, it, <laughs> it is what it is. And you told them, and you told them too, and yeah, and you just you just knew you, you knew you knew you knew, and you were just trying to tip people off. I mean, right? You may you may talk, you know, with with uh, some curse words and this and that, but it's still the truth. Yeah, it is. And what it people is. need to listen to it. Yeah, so uh, we'll continue to uh, to monitor this. I have several other uh, fighters that I need to talk to that are going to tell the same or different kind of stories, but uh, it all adds up yeah. to uh, to bad business. And uh, fighters, I know you guys want fights. Everybody's looking for a fight, but it's really not worth it. Like poor Mike Gidry shows oh. up. His opponent's not there. He gets a fucking fruit basket. You get a fucking fruit basket for showing up? Really? Really? I should have cherished that basket more. Uh, you should have, bro. <laughs> you should have. Those apples were probably worth about 500 fucking bucks a piece when you think about it. <laughs> Some $500 fucking apples, bro. I didn't know that basket was made out of gold. No shit, dude. And at least you got the latest issue of MMA Unleashed. That was fucking good to know. So uh, hopefully we're going to have our boy James uh, do an article for you about this and and hopefully about a winning streak that we're going to have going for you uh next year in 2011 i want to thank yeah, you again i want to thank you again for taking time with cage radio we've gone about 37 yeah, that's minutes that's a good point one more thing one more oh, go thing for it. is you had a good you had a good point is is that's the one of my things that i was getting desperate like i like to fight four times four or five times a year you know i feel like oh last year i was like oh i'm on this this clock, you know, people are saying, oh, you're getting older. We, you know, I don't care. Age is just a number. I feel great. I'm still doing good in the gym. This year, I'm not going to go rushing out and fighting for people like Al because I'm desperate for a fight. If you guys are desperate for a fight, I mean, uh, there you can do kickboxing smokers and different things like that. Right. Stay competitive and do grappling tournaments. But I wouldn't suggest uh, going and, and fighting for something you're not sure about because, uh, well, I don't need to say it, but yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead, Mike. I hear you. Well, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I I appreciate you taking time, letting all the fighters know about uh, this uh, this atrocity that is going on. Uh, we wish you the best of luck this Sunday as you uh, return to action, and uh, I'll expect a full report next week. I want to give you this opportunity right now to shout out anybody you want, my man. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just the Iceman RX. Uh, John Hackleman in the pit. He uh, he's helped me, been helping me a lot with my striking. And uh, Justin Frazier up there at Slow Kickboxing with the wrestling. Um, my family and uh, yeah, just to John Reed. I know I I said said you know I was rock and I was upset, but no hard feelings, no hard feelings. Uh, you did your job. I went and did my job. I I came up short. Good fight, and uh, that's about it. All right, there you have it. All right, Postal P returning to action this Sunday night out Long Beach Fight Night. I believe that's Sunday night, correct? Sunday, yeah. Yeah, the after win. Uh, or the after New Year's. Yeah, so uh, that'll be... Hey, uh, I said that in, in one sentence. It was the day of day, day weigh-ins, and it's the day after New Year's. There you go. That was solid of you, my man. You were multitasking. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I appreciate it again, and uh, we will talk to you next time. Thanks again, P. Hi, bro. Out. Later.